<sighs> Breathing problems from COVID-19? You're going to want to have one of these. Come on, I'll teach you all about them. Hey you guys, Jennifer here. Today we are cracking the code on incentive spirometers. First of all, I want to give you all an update on my post-COVID recovery. I am now one month out from my positive test. I can definitely say that I'm feeling much better, but I must admit I still don't quite feel like myself yet. I'm still dealing with the mix of congestion and runny nose, which for me started day one. I still get headaches three to four times a week. I have brain fog. So I'm finding this for me to be trying when I'm communicating with other people. So trying to find words when I'm talking to them and also concentrating on my paperwork or, or if, there's so, if there's a lot of things going, going on around me, trying to focus on just one thing is especially difficult too. And I also still have that lingering fatigue. So I'm glad that I'm able to finish out a full day's worth of work, but at the end of the day, and I'm when I'm home, I'm pretty much ready to go to bed. I've also tried to start back on my exercise routine, but I can barely make it through a relatively easy 20 minute workout. And this is quite a difference for me because before, before I was sick with COVID, I was able to do about 45 minutes at a moderate intensity level. So it's, it's really, kind of disheartening that I'm not quite able to get back to my normal routine just yet. The doctor at my facility said that all of these lingering symptoms can last for up to three months. Ugh. So I'm really just trying to take it one day at a time and I'm trying to find ways to keep my spirits up. Okay, so today's video is all about this handy little device. It's called an incentive spirometer. It's a straightforward tool that can be used um, for people fighting all kinds of lung conditions. As a speech therapist, I use spirometers with a lot of my patients who have COPD, emphysema, bronchitis, or if they've gone to the hospital with pneumonia. They're also very useful for people who are recovering from surgery or those that have had a prolonged hospital stay. However, since the world is battling from this horrible coronavirus, I wanted to post this video to let you guys know how important these devices can be and show you how to use them so that anyone who is trying to recover from the virus can get better sooner. When people develop COVID-19 and it impacts their lungs, it can cause complications such as pneumonia, acute respiratory distress syndrome, also known as ARDS, and or sepsis. So I want to first go over what each of these are and how they affect the lungs. We'll start with pneumonia. It's the one that most people know and it's more common than some of the other ones. But pneumonia occurs when the lungs become filled with fluid and inflamed, which is going to lead to breathing difficulties. The type of pneumonia that COVID-19 causes unfortunately tends to affect both lungs. The tiny air sacs in the lungs, known as alveoli, they fill with fluid, which then limits their ability to take in oxygen. This is gonna cause shortness of breath, coughing, and a general sense of unwellness. Typically, people recover from pneumonia without any lasting damage, but since pneumonia from COVID is usually severe, breathing difficulties may take months to improve. So now let's talk about the acute respiratory distress syndrome. This occurs as the pneumonia progresses and more of the air sacs become filled with fluid leaking from the tiny blood vessels in the lungs. As the prolonged shortness of breath sets in, it can lead to this acute, which means short lasting ARDS, which ultimately is a form of lung failure. Since most people are unable to breathe on their own, they're going to require ventilator support to help circulate oxygen throughout the body. People who, are survi people who survive ARDS and recover from COVID-19 are really lucky, but they may have lasting pulmonary scarring. And then there's sepsis. So sepsis is called when the infection reaches and then spreads throughout the bloodstream. This is gonna cause widespread tissue damage. 
In sepsis, the coordination between the organs, including the heart and the lung, they fall apart. And so when this happens, entire organ systems in the body can start to shut down, one after the other. Think of a series of dominoes. It's kind of, that's kind of how it happens. Patients who survive sepsis will also be left with lasting damage to the lungs and any of the other organs that it affects. So when people have breathing problems or even pain when they're trying to take deep breaths, then they're gonna to tend to take very uh, short, shallow breaths. This means that their lungs will never fully fill with air. This is then gonna cause the air sacs to become stagnant, which is then gonna harbor infection. So that's where this little device right here comes in handy. The main goal of an incentive spirometer is to reopen the alveoli, which remember are the tiny air sacs where gas exchange occurs, and it gets the air flowing in the smallest nooks and crannies inside of your lungs. The only time you shouldn't use one of these devices is if you've recently had eye surgery, if you have a collapsed lung, or if you have an aneurysm. Otherwise, you're pretty safe to use these. So before I set this down, the device is made out of plastic, as you can see, and it's relatively small. It's about the size of a tablet. It has a mouthpiece here at the very end that is attached to um, kind of a little vacuum tube. It also has this yellow piston down here at the bottom. And this is what's going to rise up as you inhale the air. This place over here where it says coach on it is kind of doing the, just that. It's going to kind of help coach you and let you know that if you are inhaling at the right pace. So this little, this little no yellow nodule right here will move and you want it to stay in the middle. This device is also gonna usually most of them are also going to come with a paper that looks like this one and it down here is going to show you the normal capacity based on your gender male or female and also your age because as we get older we don't anticipate our lungs being able to hold as much air as if we're 20 years old so real quick i want to kind of go over and show you guys how this works in real time so you take the mouthpiece and you stick it in your mouth. First of all, you want to make sure that you have exhaled all of your air. So you want to get ready. You want to be ready to inhale, take in, taking in a deep breath. So when you're ready, let out all your air, put the mouthpiece in your mouth and breathe in. It works just like that. When you're inhaling the air, you wanna make sure that you're not rushing the air in all of a sudden like this, or even going too slow, as that's gonna make it really hard to achieve your goal. This little piece right here is just an indicator to kinda of let you know how high, how much air your lungs are able to take in so that you can set yourself where you need to be. So let's say that you're able to achieve 1500 milliliters of displaced air uh, when you start trying this. Um, and for your age and gender, you're to reach 25, 2250, then you might wanna use move that little yellow indicator up to that mark so that you have something that you're aiming for. So generally when I have my patients using these devices, I have them do about 10 reps uh, about every one to two hours throughout the day, depending on how well they can tolerate it. When you start using these devices, you'll find that you become tired pretty quickly when you first start using them. That's because spirometers target muscle endurance. So the more that you stick to using these, the easier it will get. The main reason that I love these devices, and if that comes off, you just stick it back on, but one of the main reasons that I love using these is because it gives so much of a visual feedback. So we are all able to take deep breaths, but we're not able to see if we're really making progress towards goals or if we're taking as much air in as we think we are or that we need to be taking in. So by using this, it allows us to, to see where we're at and then make progress, make gains toward those goals.
Okay, so I will be sure to include a, a link in the description section below if you're interested in purchasing one of these guys from Amazon. They're, they're relatively inexpensive, about 10 to $12 is the price that I've seen most of them priced at. You can also find them at most medical supply stores, but they're gonna charge you just a little bit more if you find them there. All right guys, that wraps up this video. Thank you guys for watching and see you again soon. Don't forget to give the cryptogram puzzle a try, and until next time, good luck cracking the code.